All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's it uh virgin or this week's um webinar in our fall webinar series on teaching research. Um, this week, my colleague Trisha Clark will be presenting a webinar about assignment design. Um, this webinar will be recorded and will be posted on YouTube probably sometime later this week or early next. Uh, we will have time for questions, both recorded and unrecorded, but please also feel free to put questions in the chat. Um, go ahead, Trisha. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as my colleague Kathy mentioned, my name is Trisha Clark. I am the Community College Engagement Librarian here at UDC. Um, so, so far in the series, we have talked about how students approach research. Uh, we've talked of theories of pedagogy. We've talked about how to support students as they develop an awareness of information and also how to find that information. And I encourage you, if you haven't um, attended any of those um, uh, theories or, or episodes in our series, our faculty series, um, please check them out on YouTube. Um, they've been really great. Um, obviously, you can continue to reach out to us about any of those topics that have been discussed beforehand, but uh, make sure and check those out. So we've talked about all those things today. Um, today, I'm going to talk about designing research assignments. Um, and I'm going to preface this all by saying uh, that this is by no means a uh, an assignment design workshop. Um, but we are hoping to share a few things that faculty can do to help support their students um, as they continue to learn information seeking skills. And ultimately, we're hoping that this is um, the beginning of an ongoing dialogue and that we can and um, open some more space for collaboration, um, particularly as it regards assignment design with faculty. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> today I'm gonna talk a little bit about the information search process. Again, this was mostly covered in um, our very first series, our very first episode of the series, the faculty series. Um, but I'm gonna talk about uh, the information search process briefly again. I'm also gonna mention some of the challenges that students face with this information search process or the research process. Um, I will offer some tips or just some suggestions on assignment design and then uh, a few additional things that faculty can do to help support students with the information search process. All right, so but before we get into the details of assignment design, it's really helpful to think about the perspective of your students and how they approach research. Again, much of this was covered in our very first teaching uh, research webinar, but I want to return to Kulthau's model of the information search process. All right, so using this model as a framework, um, we can actually see that students uh, experience research, uh, research assignments in six different stages. And so the stages here are demonstrated on the screen. The first one is initiation, which is when a student first becomes aware of a lack of knowledge um, or understanding. And this is um, important to this conversation because this is when students tend to feel uncertain or anxious, right? Um, the next stage is selection, which is when a student has identified a general topic or problem. And as a result, some of the initial uncertainty they may be feeling actually turns into optimism about beginning the research process. The next stage is exploration, which is when students encounter information that is incorrect or inconsistent in some way or confusing. Um, and that can then cause them uncertainty. And that also can have effect, an effect on their confidence. The next stage is formulation, uh, which is when their confidence starts to increase uh, because the student has formulated a focused perspective or argument um, or an approach for their impending research. Um, the following stage is collection, which is uh, essentially the gathering process of information. And this is when students tend to get more interested and um, more importantly, feel less uncertain. All right. And then the final stage is presentation, uh, which is when the student presents information they have learned to a reader or to an audience. Um, and at this stage, they can feel either satisfaction or disappointment, depending on how well they think they did. Right. So before thinking about designing an assignment, uh, it's really important to keep in mind just exactly how your students approach the information search process and um, particularly in an academic context. So in addition to thinking about how they approach the research process, it's helpful to think about the challenges that students often face um, when doing research, right? When provided with a research assignment. Um, and so I sort of alluded to that with the previous slide, but um, 
a large part of some of the challenges that students face um, tends to be uh, emotional, right? So certain emotions that they experience. So emotions like anxiety, uncertainty, confusion um, might actually end up discouraging them. So according to Kultau's model, uh, students demonstrate a variety of emotions, right? Ranging from um, anxiety and certainty, uh, particularly in the earlier stages of their research. And these emotions tend to, um, to fluctuate and they're confidence levels tend to fluctuate throughout those stages as well, right? So the emotions may be unexpected. Um, they can sometimes even be hard for students to navigate. And in some cases uh, may potentially lead them to avoid the assignment. Um, it might prevent them from fully engaging with the research process in the ways that they, that they really need to. Another issue that students tend to face is figuring out how to successfully navigate the assignment requirements. And so this is where assignment design and prompts come in, right? Um, prompts are often laid out, uh, the, the requirements for, for assignment are often laid out in prompts, um, but students tend to find assignment prompts uh, confusing. It can be difficult for them to navigate. Um, I posted a link here on the slide and I can share this with anyone who's interested. Um, there is a research study that was done in 2010 that determined that uh, research assignment prompts can sometimes be unhelpful in terms of explaining different aspects of the research process. So they usually were focused more on the mechanics of writing, um, how to present the final research product, and, and even in some cases, punitive efforts. If requirements weren't met, instead of focusing on explaining things like the research process, um, how to find, evaluate, and integrate sources into, uh, into a research assignment. So generally speaking, prompts tended to focus more on things like um, what would happen if students plagiarize, but Focus, but didn't focus as much on what um, plagiarism is and, and why the there's a value in citing your sources, right? Um, so then an additional thing that students struggle with is simply to get started with the research process. And this is something that librarians often hear directly from the students when we go into their classrooms or when we meet with them for one-on-one -on -one research appointments is they may have a prompt um, and maybe the prompt is really well designed and has all the information they need, but they generally tend to struggle at this stage, right? The stage of really just getting started with the research process. Um, in some cases, it's information overload. Uh, in many cases, it's just really having a good understanding of where to go to find the information they need um, and, you know, using the information in ways that's, that can be helpful to their research project. So again, these are just some, some things to consider when you're thinking about assignment design is that students are often struggling at these uh, various stages of the information information search process, right? And it's helpful to identify those places, those areas, those bottlenecks um, that might prevent students from <clears throat> really engaging with the research process. This is also uh, a quick plug, uh, but this is also a place where librarians can be really helpful, right, and useful. So again, I mentioned we do go into classrooms to help with library instruction, but we obviously also help with um, uh, research, uh, very, students with various stages in their research. So we can help students um, at the very beginning of the research process, the very end, in the middle, throughout the entire process. And in fact, if you have embedded librarians in your classes, um, this is actually a really great opportunity for the librarians to be aware of the context of your assignments, right, to be able to see, um, you know, what assignments have come prior and to really be able to support students at each stage of um, any research assignments or, or um, information search process assignments that you might have. So quick plug for embedded librarianship. If you have more questions about that, um, of course, we'll have time for questions at the end, but feel free to, um, you know, to reach out to us about that. All right. So <clears throat> Now that you've kind of gotten some sense for how students approach the information search process and um, some idea, which I'm sure as faculty you're already familiar with, but some idea of, some of the challenges that students tend to face um, with research, uh, there are some things that faculty can do to help with these challenges, right? So um, today we're focusing specifically on being intentional about um, assignment design about how you design your research projects, because assignments play a huge role in um, student success. And the, the um, it's a critical part of supporting students. Good assignment design is a critical part of supporting students as they continue to learn just how to develop their research skills um, and continue to um, uh, you know, be scholars in this academic context. So, <clears throat> First thing to consider in terms of research design is to consider your student learning, oh, 
student learning objectives, your SLOs, right? So what skills do you want your students to learn? What are your main learning objectives? Um, not just for the assignment, but for the course, right? And then you can keep those, um, those SLOs in mind as you begin to design your, your assignments. The next thing is to obviously set and clear, uh, set and communicate clear expectations. So again, this is where assignment prompts come in, right? Um, it's important to be clear about what your expectations are in your assignment prompts. Um, ideally, your assignment prompts aren't just um, outlining the mechanics of the um, uh, research project of the, of the requirements of the research project, but it's also helping to give some guidance on maybe what kinds of sources students need to use, um, what kinds of so sources that are helpful for different stages of the research process. So you would use different kinds of resources for the very early stages of your research process, and that would differ from um, the kinds of resources that you'd hope to use, you know, uh, at, at, very, at different stages. So giving guidance on um, what kinds of resources students can use, um, and also how to find them. Right, um, that could be really helpful for students in that assignment prompt. The other thing that could be helpful is talking about the why behind assignment requirements. Um, it could be really helpful to explain the significance or context um, behind why you are requiring a, a work cited page. It's not just a, an arbitrary requirement, but um, helping students understand the wider context of research um, as being part of a conversation, for instance, right? And so you not only add um, some credibility to yourself as a researcher, as a scholar, as somebody who's entering into this larger conversation, but you're also showing people um, um, that you are aware of the conversation, that you're aware of the, the, the folks who've come before you who've written about this topic, right? So showing students that context helps them understand why including a writing, uh, a, re a reference page, right? Including citations um, in the body of the uh, project, um, but also at the end of the project, if it happens to be a paper, um, why that is really helpful and useful and not just an arbitrary requirement for that research project. Right, or thinking about something like an annotated bibliography. Again, giving them a context <clears throat> behind why that assignment is required as part of the research project can be really helpful, right? So why, why would you need to, why should you consider um, looking at your sources, evaluating those sources, and then thinking about how those sources can then be used in the in the research project. Does it apply, right? It may be a valid source, but does that source actually apply to the context of your research project? Giving students that context in the classroom helps them understand the importance of each of those um, pieces of your assignments, right? And then, <clears throat> excuse me, um, an additional thing that could help is um, helping students make the connections between um, research they do in their own life, their everyday life or previous life research with academic research, right? Reminding them that they are already researchers, researchers um, and that um, many of the skills that they've developed um, outside of an academic context are also useful within an academic context. That can be really helpful. In addition to um, leaving room for giving opportunity for, uh, for instance, choosing topics that are relevant to students' lives, right? So topics that are meaningful to them in some way and that therefore allow them to um, connect the concept of research to um, sort of this larger endeavor, I think would be really helpful. And then of course, scaffolding. Um, uh, students tend to see research assignments as daunting, right? You present them with this um, nicely designed and you know structured assignment, but they may see that uh, assignment as as overwhelming, something that um, they may not be familiar with, or maybe they haven't done in a long time. So it could be really helpful to break up your research assignments, um, you know, into smaller pieces. So again, for instance, you um, have uh, check-ins with students at different points where they uh, provide you with an outline for the research project um, that you review, you know, one-on-one -on -one with that student or have a, a peer um, a system of peer review, right, for different stages. So scaffolding is always going to be um, useful and helpful <clears throat> as you are designing your research projects, excuse me. And then <clears throat> being able to check in with those students at those various um, stages, creating smaller components of your assignments and being able to check in with students um, <clears throat> can really be helpful for them too and to, you know, uh, ease some of the concerns that they may feel about uh, a daunting giant research project. And then finally, I think an additional thing that faculty can do that will be really helpful is getting creative about the, the final research product. Um, so students tend to be uh, perhaps more familiar with uh, research papers, um, but maybe uh, a good 
way to present information to students learning could be something like a podcast um, or you know something technology related that students tend to be more engaged with um, nowadays anyway so requiring um, being more open-minded about the requirement for the end product of their research project can be really helpful to students. All right, and so what else can faculty do? Um, this should probably have come prior to the assignment design information, but um, acknowledging the emotions is, is really helpful, right? So earlier I mentioned um, during various stages of those of the research um, research process, students tend to have emotions that fluctuate between um, various levels of confidence. There may be some anxiety, some concern, some confusion. It's really helpful to acknowledge those emotions that students have um, as being valid concerning research. Um, I often, so whenever I go into a classroom to do library instruction, um, and I know that my colleagues do the same thing, we tend to sometimes take a temperature of how students are feeling about research, maybe about the assignment that's coming up, or just generally how they're feeling about research as a whole. And, you know, you get a variety of responses, but in some cases, students tend to have, um, you know, these, these uh, fears, concerns, the, the, these um, adjectives, these words come up um, when they describe how they feel about research. And, um, all of that is valid. I tend to tell students that I think the most seasoned of researchers get frustrated, right? Primarily because research is not a linear process. Um, it is, it is iterative. It, it's it, iterative. It's cyclical. You know, you go back and forth. Um, there is really no clear path um, to research. And in many cases, research never ends, right? It's, it's sort of, in many cases, it's this ongoing process. So it can be frustrating. Um, in some cases, it's trial and error. And I think, um, you know, as librarians, we try to demonstrate that with students um, in the classroom when we show them how to find sources and, um, you know, doing things like keyword searches and realizing that a lot of what you do in a research um, process, uh, sometimes it requires trial and error, but you are human and you're going to feel, um, you know, frustration or, you know, certain kinds of emotion throughout that process. So just acknowledging that, um, I think, with students can go a really long way. The other thing that is helpful is to provide guidance throughout the entire process of the research project. So I mentioned scaffolding. Um, sometimes students feel like they get the assignment at the, you know, um, from, from a faculty person, from a professor, um, and then they're on their own. You know, they go from that to the finished product. And so it's really helpful to just reiterate to students that um, that they can reach out to support or to help to, to give them references um, to where they can go to to find support for a research project throughout all of those different stages, those smaller components from beginning to end. Um, because again, as they go through each of those stages, they are gonna need some guidance, right? And then finally, um, as I was mentioning again, using librarians as resources. Um, librarians are, we are perfectly positioned to be um, resources, to be collaborators in this process of assignment design, primarily because we can come in to um, help with, uh, you know, library instruction within the classroom, but also because we see students on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, um, at, while they are going through various stages of that research process. So we are, um, uh, perfectly suited to collaborate with you on um, questions of assignment design. We are hoping to um, really be partners in the teaching and learning process. So, you know, as you consider um, the kinds of assignments and the kind kinds of research projects you would like your students to engage in, um, you know, it's always helpful to, to, to use us, to reference us as resources, um, to collaborate with us within the classroom, within your Blackboard spaces, um, you know, and of course, make sure that students are aware that they have us as a, as a resource to use as well. And with that, I will move on to see if anyone has any questions. Feel free to either unmute yourself or you could put questions in the chat. And of course, questions don't just in here. If you have questions in the future about assignment design, um, ideally, you know, it would be great if we could have some workshops on campus at some point, but I, you know, we would love to work with you in whatever capacity um, you would like to, um, you know, in regards to assignment design. I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. Hello? Yes. Hi, uh, I'm sorry. I was a little slow on the chat. Oh, the mute. Uh, <laughs> no problem. Hey, this is Professor Wright. I think I, I bumped into you in the yes. campus. Yes. Uh, Hi, how are you? Uh, very good. 
I um, generally, uh, well, one reason why I, I took this workshop is because I'm always kind of doing this, the same thing. I have my annotated bibliography. I have, um, you know, a workshop on MLA, APA. Yes. Yep. Uh, and um, uh, trying to get students to really look at uh, a format uh, for their paper. But I wanted to come up with new ways to engage them on research process. Mm -hmm. And um, especially in the virtual space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the uh, bef before the pandemic, when I was uh, doing this uh, face to face, uh, we had a lot of work on um, uh, sort of group rubrics, just letting them know, uh, you know, this is why you're being graded on this. But, you know, here's some things, you know, we can change. Here's how it's more, more collaborative grading. Uh, this is what an annotated bibliography looks like. But now with the virtual librarian, I mean, I've been telling the students they can literally have a chat with the librarian. The discussion um, space, yeah. And, and we've had, at least on one occasion, uh, the librarian who's embedded in our discussion board give information uh, to students. I've just been brainstorming on a way for uh, the librarian to be sort of engaged in a in a topic. Um, or, mm. or or maybe it's, up, maybe it's up to me to sort of come up with a scenario where the librarian could come in that day to to work with students, I wasn't sure, you know, what the flexibility was. If I'm being limited in how I'm putting things together, because um, now that is getting closer towards the end, students are engaging the digital librarians, but not as much Absolutely. as they should. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it tends to be the case. I would say so. There, there really are no limits, um, particularly with the embedded librarian process, right? So I would, I would recommend. Um, and, you know, you can obviously work one-on-one -on -one directly with your embedded librarian, but it's really helpful if you have maybe a an idea of when you would like the librarian to come in. To, so obviously we do the library instructions, we come into the class to do, you know, anything ranging from sort of like a, a library orientation to more specific um, tailored sessions based on upcoming assignments. So we're, we, um, we're able to do both, um, but we can come in as many times as you, as you want to. Um, so if you have an idea of where in your course progress, you would like the librarian to, you know, um, come in, in, an, in addition to um, like an, an orientation that they've done, um, that would be really helpful. Um, but I think the benefit of us being embedded in the Blackboard space is um, we generally follow along with the, you know, with the, the temperature of the class and to see how things are going. So in many cases, the discussion board posts, um, you know, try very hard to uh, address like an upcoming assignment or something that, that um, you know, we can provide additional resources to a link out to. Um, but again, there's no limit. So if there's something in addition that you'd like for your classes, particularly as, you know, as the semester is coming to a close, I would highly recommend reaching out to your embedded librarian or, you know, anyone, any one of librarians. Um, and, you know, we can accommodate um, more interactive, I would say more interactive or more uh, um, engaging maybe uh, <laughs> um, okay, sessions okay. in the classroom. Okay. And just, <laughs> just to maybe. add on, on that, I would say it can also look like whatever you want it to look like, right? And I think sometimes doing smaller bits throughout the semester can be more impactful in some circumstances for some classes, you know, for some professors than one session or two sessions, right? You know, so if we come uh, work with students on their, you know, research topics, right? Um, and then come back later when we're talking about figuring out what kinds of sources to use, all of that, right? It sort of shows the arc of the process, but also doesn't throw too much at students at any one time so that it ends up being a little bit counterproductive. But really it's it's up to you and, you know, what you know about what your students need, um, what works for your schedule, all of that stuff. So we're happy to work um, to make stuff happen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, any other questions? And again, we're really hoping for this to be ongoing. So, you know, if at any point after this, <laughs> if you have questions or um, brainstorming or just ideas um, that you'd like to share with us, feel free to do, do that. You you know, do you have many students contacting the the embedded librarians and and the librarians in the digital chat 
I'm, I'm so I, I told my class I was so happy to have this option and I'm always telling them to take advantage of it. But I wasn't sure. Uh, have, have you had great success so far or? So we've had success with students making one on one appointments with us just because okay. we are, you know, that um, increased presence in a classroom. The discussion board is, is a bit because I'm also one, um, an embedded librarian in uh, several mm -hmm. classes. It is a space that isn't used as often as it probably could be. Um, I've okay. had one or two students reach out on that board specifically, and then, you know, we follow up either via email or, you know, making an appointment with um, with our appointment form. But yeah, it's generally a space that um, probably is a little underutilized, but it, I think it's still helpful for students to know that there is presence, a presence there and that somebody is, um, you know, checking into the classroom pretty often. Okay. I would, I would gotcha. say anec anecdotally, since we started doing more embedding, we've seen a pretty significant increase in the number of appointments, mm -hmm. um, which I think can be really effective, right? Because, you know, I'm sure you've experienced this, that students come in with all kinds of different experiences and backgrounds, right? And so, you know, we can kind of supplement what you're doing by addressing specific needs in a more concentrated one-on-one -on -one way. Uh, so it can be a really good kind of supplement to what's happening in the classroom there. And it's, it's honestly, it's very cool, right? And, you know, we're happy to be another uh, support for students along their, their sort of academic journey um, and getting them squared away with research, especially in, in the earlier stage writing classes. And we do tend to sometimes even, you know, do things like wish people, you know, good luck during finals and, and you know, midterms and that thing. So I think that goes a long way, even if we're not getting the maybe direct feedback on the discussion board, um, it is still a really useful space um, that we've found so far. But we do welcome feedback. So, and we're hoping to continue the embedded, um, the embedded program. It's, it's um, been really helpful and, um, you know, we're continuing to learn more about it. Yeah, and we'll definitely plan. We're planning on continuing it into the spring and in the future. So we'll be checking in with the faculty who've had embedded librarians this semester because it's, you know, it's a growing program, right? Yeah, um, so we want to figure out ways to make it stronger and better to support both the faculty and the students. All right, any other questions about assignment design? If there are none, I can stop the recording and we can take unrecorded questions. So let me do that.